What's up, you sexy beasts? Hope you guys are doing well. I apologize for the uh, the audio on yesterday's vlog. It wasn't great, was it? It's quite windy. But today I've got a dead cat on the mic here. Not an actual dead cat. It's a uh, it's a videography tool that you place on the mic. It's like a little I don't know, like a little sleeve for the mic. So hopefully it sounds better. Um, today's workout. I'm going to stick with the AMRAP. Uh, sorry, the Emom. Um, Theme, the Imam theme. I'm going to do three exercises and go for half an hour. I've picked three exercises that I hate, that I suck at. That is uh, front squats, burpees, and the air bike. So I'm just going to do eight reps of each. So I've got 50 kgs on the bar again. That's uh, around 110 pounds. So eight front squats, minute number one, um, eight burpees, minute number two, and eight calories on the air bike, minute number three repeat for 10 rounds that's 30 minutes so not a whole lot of volume but I'm just trying to be conservative because yesterday I, uh, I definitely I definitely hurt more than I wanted to um, if you know me I've got pretty immobile ankles hence the uh, hence the lifters so I've got the uh, the Nikes on and then fun fact I've had these bad boys since 2012 that's eight years and they're still going I don't smell too bad either eight years that's uh, some high quality knee sleeves, reband knee sleeves. Um, what I've got here, if you're wondering, I've got the uh, the BPN G1M uh, drink. It's basically carbohydrates and sodium. So uh, it just kind of fills me up for the workout. And then um, in here I've got some BCAs, watermelon BCAs and some creatine. So I like to have two drinks. Keeps me hydrated, keeps me fueled. It's only a half an hour workout, it's not overly long. Normally I have those when I run, but stinking hot here and uh, yeah let's get it let's get it I think today I'm going go for something a bit more mellow I'm go for a bit of Bieber I think a bit of Bieber nice and chilled you know let's keep the heart rate down keep moving everybody knows my name now but it's killing me now minutes in, 10 to go, it's getting hard. this close at calling it quits at 25 minutes I guess that's uh, that's one of the benefits of documenting your workouts at 25 minutes I was like for call it quits now I've got to show you guys that I quit five minutes early so uh, you guys keep me going for those last five I reckon that was the perfect amount of reps for me today 30 minutes just eight of each anything more I would have I would have died so that was perfect that's another benefit um, of EMOMs I didn't mention in the last video is because EMOMs are typically longer like 20 to 30 minutes or 15 to 30 minutes when it comes to the open style workout which are typically more like 7 to 15 pretty much half the time of these type of EMOMs just mentally knowing that you've done, you've done workouts that have lasted 30 minutes then uh, when you get a workout that's 10 or 12 minutes just mentally you just go into it a bit more confident hopefully by tomorrow my elbows feel a lot better and I can start doing some some pulling and pressing with them That'll be good. I miss pull-ups and handstand push-ups. So uh, hopefully we can get those tomorrow. Maybe some overhead press. So that's me for today. 30 minute EMOM.
What's up guys? It is, uh, it's the next day. It's the next day. Excuse the, um, excuse the sexy voice. Got a bit of a head, head cold. Not Rona, don't worry. Just a bit of a head cold, snotty nose, a bit of a sore throat. Um, yeah, so I sound a bit, sound a bit funny, don't I? I just watched this podcast called The Darren Woodson Show. Um, shout out to these guys, by the way. That was very, very well done. I really enjoyed the way they ask questions and, and run a podcast. So um, I subscribe and I'll definitely be following along. Um, I'm hoping that they will do more CrossFit athletes going forwards. But they had Matt Fraser on. And um, I wasn't sure if I should make this video because I'm sure there's going to be more of these come out. And also, I don't want to add to the drama or, um, you know, or just make a video for the sake of making one. But I was kind of gutted. Um, there was one part of the interview. I've only watched part two. It's a two-part um, podcast. I watched the second part. And uh, there's one part where they ask him about Rich. Um, these guys aren't crossfitters. I think they're football players. I don't really know who they are, to be honest. Um, just found them today. But they asked, they said, hey, look, you know, you live in Cookville, Tennessee, so does Rich. What are your guys' relationship like? Matt basically said, look, I've lived there for three years, and Rich hasn't spoken to me for about two and a half. And uh, then he goes on to kind of elaborate on that um, and how he's been intentionally been shut out of CrossFit Mayhem. And um, yeah, it's quite shocking. It's quite, uh, quite a surprise, to be honest. I thought that they had a decent relationship I thought they were friendly um, I've seen a couple of interviews where people have asked Rich about Matt and uh, asked Matt about Rich and you know they're always um, very tactful in the way they kind of uh, talk about each other but um, yeah that's the first time uh, according to Matt that's the first time that he's uh, kind of brought out the story and it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes whether um, whether Rich sometime down the line gets to respond uh, obviously there's always two sides to the story i'm gonna link the darren woodland show at the end of this video on the end screen but also i'll drop the link to their channel in the description um it was honestly one of the more enjoyable podcasts i've watched in a long time three guys that are interviewing and the questions are great the vibe's great so highly recommend you go and check it out definitely go and check out the um the podcast apart from the whole rich question all the other questions and responses from matt are just unreal there's so much good stuff in that podcast so highly highly recommend i remember watching the rogue invitational uh, matt pulled out of that one but i remember watching tia doing it at a gym that wasn't cross from mayhem and i was really confused as to why she wasn't using the cross from mayhem gym and then again with part one of the crossfit games this year the online part again seeing both matt and tia not at cross from mayhem i was kind of thinking what's the story why aren't they doing it there and so uh, it turns out there is more to the story. Now, what I love about Matt's response on this podcast is that he says, look, I can go on for days about this topic and talk a lot more on it. But most of the stuff I'll say, I'd say would be my opinion. It wouldn't be straight facts. So in the podcast, he just sticks to the facts, the stuff he knows. So he mentions a couple of examples, which are just straight facts. And that is uh, being kicked out of a group chat that they were all a part of uh, with no explanation. Um, asking if they could use CrossFit Mayhem uh, to do their workouts for the online competition for both the Rogue and the Games and being told that, hey, look, due to Corona, um, we don't want to um, prefer some people. No one can use the space, including members. Um, so, you know, we don't want to favor um, athletes over the members. Uh, but then apparently Tia went to pick something up at CrossFit Mayhem and there were a bunch of people using the gym including Rich and his team. So just stuff like that. He mentions um, just stuff that is just pure facts. Um, but I would love to actually hear the story or kind of hear his thoughts about why there is this tension, why why they've been excluded. Now, I don't know Matt or Rich at all. I don't know them personally. I've never spoken to either of them. I've taken some amazing videos and photos of them. I must say myself. <laughs> but um, I've never spoken to either of them. So I don't know Matt or Rich. I'm not on either side. I respect them both as athletes. I love them both. And so as a fan of both of these great champions, I'm just a bit gutted that there's tension between them. I feel like being in the same kind of town um, and being two great champions, really of different eras. I know there's a bit of crossover, but really Matt was only a rookie coming up when Rich was finishing up. So they are very much the champions of their time. And I feel like there could have been some really good stuff that they could have done together or I don't know. But as I said, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more videos come out about this. I'm expecting a bunch of them to drop tomorrow. So it'll be good to see what other people say about this. If there's any other information. Um, Matt did mention that, you know, 
just through him trying to find out what the story is, like, oh, why, why am I being excluded? Because he feels like he doesn't have the answer. Um, just through trying to find out, he's realized that this is not, he's not the only one that's been kind of shut off or excluded from that kind of crew. So um, I wonder if other athletes will maybe tell their stories as well. Who knows? It's going to be interesting to see if there's more to the story there and hopefully they can mend the tension. My initial thought was, surely Rich isn't threatened by Matt. Surely this isn't about... Um, who's the better athlete or who's got more titles. There must be more to it than that because I feel like Rich got nothing to prove. You know, like I said, he finished on a high, he finished on top. And I would think, you know, having a, a wife and kids and a family and a great gym and a community, he would be content with what he achieved. And so my initial thought was, you know, Rich and the Mayhem crew obviously are very outspoken Christians, very committed Christians. And their faith is obviously a very big part of their lives. And um, I don't know how conservative they are. I don't know how much tolerance they have for things like bad language or naughty jokes. I don't know, but I just wonder whether someone like Matt, who's maybe a bit more rough around the edges from what I can observe, um, I just wonder whether there is something there, you know, with the people around Rich and the kind of crew around him, the community they have and kind of their values. I just wonder whether there's just a clash and and values and a worldview, maybe. I don't know, that's just kind of my initial thought is maybe that's it, maybe it's the whole conservative Christian thing versus uh, rugged man shooting guns. Oh, although Rich shoots guns, doesn't he? I also don't know if Matt is a man of faith. He holds his cards very close to his chest, um, whereas like I mentioned, Rich and the kind of Mayhem crew are very outspoken about their Christian faith. So yeah, I wonder if there's something there, whether there's a, a clash of values. Um, and if that is the case, it'd be very disappointing that um, that it couldn't have been just better communicated, you know, like instead of just cutting people off or ghosting people, um, it's obviously a better way to go about it and just to be upfront and honest to say, hey, look, our values don't align or whatever it is. I don't think there's another male athlete at CrossFit Mayhem that was even remotely close to, you know, challenging Matt or whether Rich was working with anyone uh, that was competing directly with Matt. I don't know, I don't think so. Matt does mention some people trying to sabotage uh, his journey as an athlete along the way, so he doesn't go into great detail about it, um, but he does kind of allude to the fact that there are people that have been intentionally trying to, um, I guess, slow him down. So yeah, very interesting. I mean, as a Christian man myself, I understand, if this was a scenario, I understand that sometimes, you know, your values of other people clash, and if they're coming into your space, into your gym, or whatever it is, um, and you feel like, you know, they're not acting the way that you would like them to act. It's up to you as your responsibility to then communicate that and give them a chance to, uh, you know, perhaps change their behavior when they come into your space. I'm obviously just hypothesizing here. I'm not saying this is the case, um, but there's a fine line between um, not pushing your beliefs on someone else versus, um, you know, standing up for your standards when it comes to your space or, you know, um, the environment that you've created. I think there is validity in holding someone to a standard when they come into your space. So for example, if you go to a shop, um, you gotta kinda abide by their principles or their rules uh, to be able to shop there or use the space. So um, so I get that, but there's a real fine line between uh, kind of pushing your beliefs on someone versus asking them to um, obtain a certain standard when they come into your space. But whatever the case is, the way to not go about it is to just ghost someone or to just um, kind of block someone out of a group without any explanation or saying anything. So it is a bit strange if what Matt is saying is true and I don't know why it wouldn't be. He comes across like a very uh, straight down the line kind of guy who just tells it as it is. Um, I personally don't like the way that he, him and Tia have been treated and the way that they've been uh, communicated to um, or the lack of communication. So anyway, what do you think? Watch the podcast, watch the whole thing and because uh, it is very, very good. But in the comments below, just about the Rich piece in particular, what do you think? Why do you think Rich hasn't spoken to Matt in two and a half years? Why do you think all of a sudden they just cut uh, them off from the group chats and using the gym and all that stuff? Um, it's all very interesting. On a lighter note, this shirt. This shirt from Hustle Made. It is just the nicest fitting, softest feeling thing I've ever put on my body so uh Craig and Jazz great job loving it loving it even rocking the uh rocking the trackies at the moment as well so uh anyway guys I hope you're well um hope that wasn't too much of a downer I just saw that thought it'd be interesting to discuss it and uh again like I said I don't know Rich or Matt I'm not choosing a side I'm just trying to work out in my head what could have happened 
hopefully we get to hear more about the story because I'm very curious. And uh, again, just want to give a massive shout out to the Darren Woodson Show. They actually did a podcast with Rich about seven months ago on there as well. But that episode I just watched with Matt was brilliant. So big ups to those guys and uh, go and check them out. Have a fantastic night, guys. Hopefully this head cold clears up and I can get back in the gym, but I might take it easy, take a day or two off until this fully clears up. I'd hate for it to drop down to the chest. So um, yeah, love you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Love your